Good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here. Um, my name is Jesse Young. I work for the mobile web team of Booking.com. I was in charge of developing all the uh, service workers related features for our mobile website. And first of all, I want to ask how many of you have used Booking.com before? Oh, that's a lot. Uh, thanks, guys. And um, how many of you are from outside of Amsterdam for this event today? Oh, did you use Booking.com for your accommodations? Ah, that's a small number, but a uh, wise choice for you. Uh, you can never go around to book a hotel for in Amsterdam via a company in Amsterdam, right? And uh, Booking.com was first uh, founded in the Netherlands in 1996. And um, uh, after 20 years, we now have uh, over 1,940,000 properties worldwide. And uh, we, each day, there are over one million room lights reserved uh, on our site and apps. And um, uh, in terms of the mobile website, it was first built in 2010. And after six years, as you can see, the look has changed a lot. And I bet you the code has changed a lot, too. Um, but all these histories and numbers contribute to the promises we need to take into consideration when we build our uh, things for service workers and the progress of web app. First of all, our website is already highly optimized. It's converting well. It's um, served the business needs. And there is just no way we're going to throw it away and build everything from ground. And second, we have a very large team uh, that is still growing fast. And uh, we don't want to slow things down just by introducing a whole new way of work. Second, we uh, third, we have a very large code base that is serving the websites from since the beginning of time, like from since 1996, of course. And um, we have a very convenient A-B testing infrastructure. We use everything. Uh, we use that for every features we put online. And uh, we just uh, have to use that for or, even new features like service workers. That's why it's very important to be progressive. And that's the whole idea of progress web app, right? And then the team sat down and uh, looked into the real possibilities, uh, the real potentials we have for, so from service workers and progress web app, and also uh, uh, what we can really achieve with it. And you know, ideally, you should have a very extremely optimized performance with all these uh, fancy new uh, patterns and the infrastructure and, and uh, uh, technologies uh, service worker can do. You can do pre-caching, app show, and even stream downloading. I bet uh, a lot of people have talked about this from uh, these two days. And also, you can have uh, a fantastic user engagement experience. You can have a full screen that's opening your website from the home screen of users. You can have also push notifications to better re-engage your users. And for us, um, for our business, it's about checking reminders, uh, review invitations. That is, when you check out hotel, we invite you to review, to add reviews for the hotel. And also, it's uh, something else like abandoned baskets when you browse some hotel, but you didn't book, we invite you to come back and finish your booking. But uh, uh, we have a very limited scope for what we can work on um, service workers. We currently only have uh, secure.booking.com domain. That is what we use for booking process and the post booking pages. All these uh, user uh, security sensitive uh, data uh, pages. and. Uh, we don't have uh, HTTPS for the main websites, the search results and hotel pages. That means we can't really experiment, experiment uh, much in, that, in those uh, pages. Uh, second is for those uh, user engagement things, it's really hard to um, uh, see what a, the real impact is. Our current uh, experiment tool doesn't have that much of uh, metrics for uh, users' offline behaviors. How would you uh, analyze those behaviors? How, how would you decide they are good for your business? It's uh, challenging for us. And also, for those push notifications, we are a little bit concerned what to push. Uh, for those of you who have used Booking.com, 
I bet you have uh, uh, all these experiments of receiving many emails from us, right? And those <laughs> and and um, even push notifications if you used our apps. So that's why we don't really want to annoy our users uh, even more with uh, push notification from the webs. And then there is another ideal versus reality check that is uh, implementation-wise. Implementation-wise, you should have uh, web components and uh, full client-side rendering and all the fancy things that's making your website a single page app. And you should also ideally have your users always logged in so that you can put some more personalized stuff for them. But we don't have, um, we can't really go for uh, strains for all these uh, uh, things. We still, we are a traditional web page, which means it's simple, robust, and yes, you friendly. That is, some, that is just some traits you can't uh, uh, easily give up for just for, the, for making your things more technically exciting. And second, we use, still use jQuery. We are not ashamed of it. And um, uh, we use this uh, use jQuery and all the uh, small pieces of uh, uh, libraries that we have to write very fast A-B testing and experiments. And uh, that's making the whole uh, uh, ways of our work is quick and dirty is the norm, but so we are trying still trying to improve the quality of our code, of course. And then for the users, we have uh, mostly last minute bookers and uh, new users, that is, uh, who, is uh, who will do only very low frequency purchases. You don't um, stay in a hotel every day, right? Um, that's why uh, we start to think about the real smallest viable steps for our uh, experiments with service workers. What we can really achieve with it and uh, what is the meaningful uh, features we can push to our users. First experiment we tried is to make our booking confirmation page accessible offline, but uh, without telling the users that they can access it offline. The reason is that we wanted to play safe, but we still want to have a meaningful feature online and uh, just to see how users interact with it. We, you, with this experiment, we get the idea of um, what the traffic size is, like how many percentage of our users actually have service worker available. And uh, we are also trying to clear the potential roadblocks that is how to integrate service worker codes with our existing current uh, code base, how to make the build process more smooth. And also, we are just uh, uh, delivering this to users to observe if there is any side effects, like in, in any aspect. And actually, we did in, uh, uh, see a few side effects, and we saw much more page views on the booking process, which is not the page we install the service worker. They are the pages under the same secure.booking.com domain, but um, uh, people still visited those pages much more. We started wondering why is this, and then the explanation would be users uh, opened uh, the confirmation page uh, more often because they, they can reach uh, cache now, and then they navigate to other pages, uh, but we are still can't say for sure whether that's true or not. And we did also see an increase in page load time. Why is that when with service worker, with all this uh, performance uh, improve and uh, uh, everybody else is talking about, why we see an increase in the page load time? The explanation would be we didn't really add any additional cache for things uh, but because every asset is already cached uh, by the native uh, caching mechanism of browser. Uh, one explanation might be service worker consume some CPU and somehow make the browser slower. And we didn't see any inconclusive results on conversion impact. That's why we didn't really put this uh, experiment full on and we went through the next experiment. The next experiment is more meaningful to the users. We're kind of telling users to uh, add their 
the, the last, last, last uh, latest booking to the home screen so they can access their bookings even more easily. And uh, this home screen icon will open the last uh, scene confirmation page from cache, and uh, it opens very fast, it works offline, and uh, it will always be the latest booking users made. So say if you book another booking after you add this uh, home screen, and you open, you use that link again, it will still open your latest booking. And for this round, most users just ignore this banner because it's uh, prompt out after, right after users made a booking. Um, next, next, uh, next iteration, we added this uh, explanation banner before we show the prompt. This is done with the before install prompt event. I think uh, if you have played with uh, App Manifest, there should be, you should be aware of this event. And uh, it's quite straightforward to set up. So when users click on this banner, we show this uh, latest prompt. With this approach, users get a better understanding of what it is. And uh, actually, a very high percentage of people who clicked on the banner will accept uh, the instrument of the uh, home screen icon. And uh, a lot of them who added it to the home screen will actually use it. So they are not just uh, accepting something you, uh, you, you, you promote to them. They are doing this with a conscious. And uh, this approach also led to more people added the home screen than previous round where we showed the prompts right away. With, with, with regarding this, I want to talk a little bit about, about this engagement check. That is something you need to pass when you uh, want to display this uh, prompt. Um, this is a flag you can turn on in Chrome, which will allow you in Dave mode to always show this prompt. But uh, in, real, in real life, real users will only see this prompt when they pass some kind of engagement check. And that uh, criteria is defined by Google. Uh, it is said to be the user have, has visited your site at least twice with, not, with at least five minutes between visits. At first, we thought it requires user to leave your site and come back again. But actually, it doesn't. Users can still uh, get uh, engaged, um, uh, pass the engagement check uh, in the first visit. But still, that number is, um, uh, this, kind of, this kind of limitation makes us uh, really hard to control which type of users can see this feature. Uh, we still see a very decent amount of people who, who should have seen the prompt, didn't really see it. We don't know it's whether it's really because they didn't pass the engagement check, they didn't meet, meet the five minutes requirement, or whether because some version of Chrome doesn't support this feature at all, or whether it's because some uh, vendors, some custom ROMs of Android disable, disable this feature for good. And that's making it harder for us to really examine the uh, real impact. Then uh, I want to dive a little deep into the code we wrote for service workers. Uh, this will show you how powerful service worker can be just by intercepting the uh, network requests. The first story we tried is um, uh, the first one I want to talk about is consolidating canonical URLs. So the idea is different URLs for the same resource should fetch the same cache, right? Or even ideally fetch the same request. Uh, we have all these kind of different structures of URLs uh, that is actually pointing to the same thing. We have language either in the HTML doc or either in the parameters uh, uh, of queries. And uh, that's why we used this uh, SW Toolbox middleware to write our own middleware to handle this. Uh, SW Toolbox is a library built by Google Chrome team. If you haven't uh, checked it out, uh, do please check it out. It's, uh, it provides all these uh, cache patterns you have, um, and it's very easy to use. 
So uh, we created this uh, Let's Work First enhanced uh, uh, middleware, which will just uh, which is add a additional user canonical option to the, the options. And um, if this is true, we will check whether the request URL has a canonical URL. And that is just a function we wrote uh, on the client side, just do some uh, uh, regex uh, matching and uh, try to figure out uh, what's the Canonic URL for that uh, specific uh, URL. And then if it's different than the request URL, we just file a new request with the Canonic URL. And then another story we had is to home screen link via redirection. If you remember, what we added to users' home screen is a link to their latest booking. And their latest booking will have different URLs, right, if they made uh, several different bookings. And that's why we, you need to, and uh, for the app manifest, you can only add a static URL as the start URL of the home screen icon. So that's why we do this kind of uh, redirection um, for the start URL. And uh, that redirection will always redirect to users' latest bookings. So this router intercepts all the requests for the confirmation page. And when user reach that, open that confirmation page, each time a 302 redirect response was forged on the client side and stored in the cache. And uh, then the last uh, confirmation in endpoint is used uh, for the start URL. And every time user visits that URL, it will go through service, uh, it will go through a cache only in service worker router, and it will always try to look at this uh, 302 redirector from the cache. This allows us to make the home screen icon work as a shortcut for users' bookings, but actually it is not recommended to do so now, simply because the Chrome team has decided that this is not the best experience for the users. Um, it will feel weird if you have uh, a home screen icon that's just opening something in the browser as a shortcut. Starting from Chrome 51, I think, if you set uh, the display mode in the manifest to anything else other than standalone or full screen, you will get this error, and the, the app banner will never show up. And uh, then we have uh, another solution for pre-caching. And traditionally, for pre-caching, you will have to like list all the URLs uh, uh, in an array or something, and you pass that uh, via a message to service worker and let service worker to uh, fetch all the content. But uh, what we did is to uh, fire an AJAX request from the client side page and add some kind of additional uh, request header to it. Then the service worker gets to read that header and uh, tries to figure out whether this is a request for the cache, for pre-cache. If this is a request for pre-cache, the service worker uh, tries to match in those requests from the cache. And if the cache exists, then the request will never fire. If the cache doesn't request, then it fires a request with no C with uh, CORS mode set to no CORS. This will enable uh, this AJAX request to be able to work even um, um, you request something outside of the domain. And um, that's some ideas we had for uh, this uh, um, uh, service worker thing. Then. I'd like to talk about uh, some final thoughts we have for service workers. Uh, and and uh, for us, it's always about finding the best approach fits your business needs. We are a very large website. Uh, we have a lot of people working on the same thing. We don't want to slow people down. That's why we have to go into this small step uh, uh, approach and uh, gradually adding things up. And then. You need to be creative on your solutions. 
I guess some of the redirection and the things are quite um, surprising to you guys if it is. But if it's not, uh, it's also OK. And um, uh, we kind of uh, stuck to, because we can't try web uh, components, we can't try Polymer, then that's why we start to think about uh, what else we can try for that. And uh, our general experience with Service Worker is even if we are trying something so small, we still see sometimes the API is uh, unstable, it's changing, and it has some uh, added limitation for the next Chrome version. And that's you don't know. You have to, then you have to reset your experiment, which prolongs our experiment circles. And that's kind of frustrated to us, frustrating to us. And, uh, but we still think the future looks bright for service worker itself and for us as well. So many opportunities still await us to explore. And uh, we do want to try the app show architecture, even that we are not a single page web app. Uh, we want to, to try to use this streaming API to, to return users a app show screen when they load the page, and uh, from the, the, the app show screen will be returned from the client side, but we will stream the real request from the server. That's the plan we want to try. And also, we want to try predictive loading that is, when, for example, when you select a room in the hotel page, it often means you want to make a booking. So that's when we decide we can preload assets for the book process. And so we also, of course, are very open to build a offline resilient app. And uh, once we have HTTPS deployed for all the uh, web pages we have, then it will become pos possible. And of course, notifications, although it's kind of annoying to some users, we will still want to see the real value of it. And so the message is clear, just uh, experiment and learn, even if you are a large company who has a lot of restrictions. Yeah, thanks a lot. I hope you enjoy your stay in Amsterdam and the rest of the world.